On the 28th of October 1997, Zambians woke up to a shock radio broadcast. The broadcast said that its government had been overthrown and taken over by a military regime with the person of an alias of Captain Solo as the new head of state. The incumbent president, Frederick Titus Chiluva, Zambia's second Republican president, was given hours to surrender himself and relinquish his presidency. For a brief stint, Zambia erupted into pandemonium as shock news of the coup made headway. But as quickly and sudden as the takeover had been announced, as it was quashed by military forces still loyal to the incumbent president. The coup lasted not more than three hours before Captain Solo and his mini army were subdued and arrested. Mere hours after a supposed deposition, Frederick Chilo appeared on national television announcing to the country that order had been restored. What led to the events of October 28, 1997 and its ensuing shockwaves? Walk up to the Jinjila investigative channel as we uncover the 1997 coup attempt of Zambia. Captain Solo, whose real name was Steven Nungu, was born on 6th January 1962 in the Mansa district of the then British colony in northern Odisha. Much of Captain Solo's early life is undocumented and as such shrouded in mystery. Reports indicate that after completing high school, he studied technologies at the Northern Technical College in Indola, in the Koba Bell province of Zambia. After his studies, he joined the military during the tenure of Zambia's first Republican president, Kenneth Kaunda, and was promoted to the rank of lieutenant a rank held up to the events of October 28, 1997. Zambia had obtained independence from the British on the 24th of October 1964, and Zambians had a lot of optimism of becoming a very prosperous country. Kenneth Kaunda devised humanism plans to revamp and develop Zambia. However, after 27 years of single rule by President Kenneth Kaunda's one-party state, the country was anything but prosperous. Food shortages, riots and rampant corruption had plummeted the country into abject poverty. This led to widespread outcry and eventually a change in government in 1991 with Chiluba sweeping the 1991 forced elections with the landslide victory. Much to many Zambians' dismay, Frederick Chiluba's government did not fare any better with its predecessor. Most of the country's assets were sold to foreign investors and government officials were accused of plundering the returns for themselves. With the rise of inflation, food prices and corruption allegations, Captain Solo and another captain by the name of Jack Chiti held clandestine meetings conspiring to overthrow the government of Chiluba. Both men lamented Zambia's impoverished state and lack of promotion in the army. Captain Jack Chitty in particular was tasked with mobilizing about 70 soldiers and a dozen armory vehicles to aid the takeover of Zambia. Records indicate that he only managed to recruit about 45 soldiers with another 10 who were unaware of the coup plot. The small army acquired the name of the National Redemption Council. In the early hours of October 28, 1997, Captain Jack Chitty, who was also guard commander, ordered the hastily assembled men to arrest the army base commander who was the colonel. The men found that the colonel was not home and took half measures of locking the colonel's wife and children in a cell. Afterwards, the men took the colonel's Mercedes Benz and Vintok Lagas from the army bar and stormed an arms depot stealing weapons to arm themselves in preparation for the takeover. After acquiring weapons, the soldiers made to a neighboring base and arrested several senior officers. At dawn, the militia stormed the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation radio station to announce that they had taken over the country. In the short transmission, Captain Solo made mention of national institutions such as UBZ that had gone under during Chilova's reign. In closing, Captain Solo instructed the radio host, Miss Evelyn Tembo, to play Bob Marley's redemption song. Following the announcement on radio, the soldiers fired their rifles in celebration of their supposed takeover, a move which would later prove mature. As Captain Solo and the other soldiers under his command were reminiscing their takeover, Captain Jack Chitty, went to another army base to rally support from other soldiers. While it's there, a fracas ensued leading to Captain Jack Chitty and another soldier being shot in the legs. Elsewhere, the colonel managed to quickly assemble and mobilize soldiers and involved in the coup and ambushed Captain Solo and his small militia. The small army barely put up a fight and was quickly subdued without any casualties. The colonel then took his turn on radio to announce that the coup was over. After the coup was officially quashed by soldiers still loyal to the head of state, President Chiluwa appeared on national television and declared a state of emergency. Captain Solo and the small army were charged with treason. According to the Amnesty International, the small militia of 55 soldiers was severely tortured after being arrested. The only casualties of the coup were Mr. Niven Majimela and Corporal Robert Chiulo, who died while being detained. According to the Research Doctorate of Immigration and Refugee Board of Canada, Corporal Robert Chiolo died from injuries sustained during the severe torture. President Chiluba was convinced that opposition party members were involved in the coup and implicated the first Republican President Kenneth Kaunda, 
and opposition party leaders Princess Nakatindi and Mr. Ding Mongomba, among others. Kenneth Kaunda in particular was incarcerated for four months and later put under house arrest. He would soon be released after external operation. All other political detainees were released for lack of evidence implicating them in the coup. During trial, Captain Solo admitted masterminding the entire operation and begged for forgiveness. He however was steadfast that he was justified in attempting to overthrow Chilova's government as it had been riddled with corruption. In 2003, under the tenure of Zambia's third Republican President Levi Patrick Manawasa, the treason trial was concluded and 44 of the 54 surviving soldiers were found guilty of treason and sentenced to death by hanging. President Manawasa would later commute Captain Solo's sentence to a 20-year jail term. In a twist of events, former President Chiluba's immunity was lifted by the Zambian parliament at the behest of the then president, Monawasa. Chiluba was charged with embezzling in excess of 50 million US dollars during his two five year presidential terms. In prison, Captain Solo's health began failing and he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. This led to his eventual presidential pardon from Zambia's fourth Republican president, Rupia Banda, on the 28th of December 2010. Upon release, he was reconciled with Frederick Chiruba. With stripped social security benefits, Captain Solo was released into a life of hardship and strife. Back in society as a civilian, Captain Solo dedicated his life to Christianity and changed his earliest to Apostolungo. Captain Solo would eventually die of tuberculosis on the 11th of August 2012, aged 50. The events of October 28, 1997 went down in Zambian history as a second coup attempt after another soldier by the name of Mambaru Chembe. I tried to depose Kenneth Kaunda in 1990. Both schools left a certain legacy. Captain Solo's school legacy, though amateurish, meek, and drunken, was to shed light on the alleged levels of corruption during Zambia's Second Republic. Tell us your thoughts about Captain Solo and the attempted school of 1997. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content like the one you just saw.